Folks, welcome back to Flyer Engineering. We're here in the shop. We have our 2024 WRX on lift because we are about to install all of this, the Cobb Flex Fuel System. It's finally time. It's what we've been waiting for, and so we're excited about it. Before we dive into it, just want to say real quick, you know, please, if you like the, the content that we're putting out, if you like what we're doing with the channel, make sure you like and subscribe. Check out Flat Irons Tuning for all of your parts needs. That support goes a long way to helping us keep coming back to make these videos for you. Let's dive into it. We've been waiting for this Flex Fuel kit. We've, we've heard that it was, it was close, and now it's finally at hand. We can now put Flex Fuel on this car, and so we're excited about it. We're going to install it. What is Flex Fuel? I mean, the, the very Cliff Notes version of it is this allows the car to run pump gas or E85 ethanol-based fuel in any combination thereof. It doesn't have to be all or nothing, all pump gas or all E85. Um, because now with the system, the flex fuel sensor, the flex fuel system lets the car know exactly what the content is of the fuel and the car adapts to that. And that's a really handy feature, especially if you don't always have easy access to flex fuel. If you want to do road trips where you might not have access to it, all that sort of thing. This is where flex fuel comes in. And why would you run flex fuel or E85 in the car? Well, it's an alcohol-based fuel, ethanol. It's basically like running race gas all the time. It has much better cooling properties. It's much more detonation resistant. Basically, in, in a high compression turbocharged Subaru engine, there's a lot of benefits to running E85 as fuel if you can do it. It should unlock a lot of power, and that's what we're gonna find out. But to do that, to find out what it does, well, we gotta get all this stuff put on it first. We've unboxed it here. Uh, you know, we got a whole mess of wires, but like really fancy professional looking wires. Cobb has done an amazing job here. We have our flex fuel sensor and adapter with the nice Cobb logo on it. This is the magic uh, piece, the Cobb can gateway. One of the cool things with this system, with the new system, is that it basically uses the can bus in the car, basically to send all of the signals of the fueling and everything through to the ECU so that it can do its do its job. So that is that is part of the special sauce of this. Of course, we need an access port. That's how we basically reprogram the ECU um, and, and basically get all of this functionality programmed into uh, the car so that the flux fuel system can work. So we've got that, of course, and then we opted for the optional fuel pressure sensor. The reason we did the fuel pressure sensor is, you know, when you're, when you're trying to calculate how much fuel goes into an engine, you have an injector that's open for a very specific amount of time. You know, if you have lower fuel pressure, that injector is going to have to be open a little bit longer to get that metered amount of fuel in. If the fuel pressure is high, the injector is going to have to be open for a little bit shorter amount of time. So if you want to have really precise control over the fueling, you really want to know what is going on with the fuel pressure. So that's why we have added the fuel pressure sensor as well. So it's, it's the complete package. We're excited to get it on the car. We're not excited to, to try and get the big touch screen out of the car, but that's all part of the adventure. So let's dive in. Let's see how this adventure goes. And and hopefully it won't be too bad. Bam. Oh, okay, nice and blurry. This is now a mess. You put so many plugs back here. So we got everything installed. It was not actually too bad to get all the flex fuel bits uh, installed in the car. And now we are at the boost creep the, uh, with Harvey's dyno to actually get basically a, a baseline. Then we're gonna do the flex fuel install. 
uh, and get you know flex fuel, see what the tune is like on just pump gas, and then we'll add the E85 and see what the difference is between those those three points. Just of note, which is interesting, we, we installed all the parts for the flex fuel, but we didn't we haven't installed the access port yet. We drove all the way down here and had no issues. So it does look, it does appear at this point that you can actually have all the flex fuel bits installed and still run on the stock ROM, and it doesn't throw a check engine light or anything like that. Maybe we have to drive a little bit more to know that for absolute certain, but that's that's what it looks like right now, which is pretty cool. So cars on the dyno, come on over here. Come on. Cars on the dyno. Harvey's getting it all set up and ready to do the initial baseline run. So um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get after it. Let, let's see what happens. This is the baseline with no access port installed. This is just a stock car. Two thirty-five to the wheels. Stock WRX, no changes. We're seeing peak torque at three thousand even on this. Well, if this is way different. What I'm curious about is with the top stage one because I think they're bringing in boost pressure much earlier. Mm -hmm. I think it's done. It's a gain where people drive it. It's like, wow, I got my gain at three to six, three to five thousand. Right, it's pretty damn good. The Irwin, woodworking. I'm gonna go drain this clear one so that. All right, so today's test was really just the new Cobb FA24 uh, off the shelf map, which is for the flex fuel kit that they just yep. released, which is really great. And we actually did a bunch of testing. We even tested it before we installed the Cobb access port. So it was basically a stage zero car or a stock car with no yeah, changes at all. Completely stock. Completely stock on 91. What we got for that was the 238 horsepower right as it touches the rev limiter, which is a little bit, let's see, where's my, my little arrow? It's right at the end here. We hear 238.8. Uh, the off the shelf map, you can see it moved that number 238.1 back a little earlier. And from heat soak, it loses a little here. But the reason it's heat soaking is because it's running more boost from 3,500 or from actually 3,000 on up. And you can see yeah. there are pretty immense gains. And this is, uh, this is the stage one flex fuel map. So, yeah. so it's a flex fuel map, but with just pump gas in the tank. So it's effectively just yeah. the stage one. And it is 91 octane yeah. pump gas. Just, yep. This is the 91 off the shelf map. So the gains aren't quite as good as the 93s, yep. um, but the gains are even better when you go from the 91 to the ethanol because yeah. the 91 obviously is gonna limit you. So once we went to ethanol, we filled it up, we ended up at about E66%, which on an FA should be good for all the power. And what we see is uh, good fuel pressure, plenty of uh, the injectors, are, they're right on the edge of what's, what's, uh, what they can do safely. Um, and uh, we made great power. Um, it made 264 at the wheels was its peak. And that happened also about where 
the tuned gas map happens, which is at about 5,400. So a yeah, little that, bit before that torque the line. is like that's pretty impressive. Yeah, the torque comes on way earlier. In fact, it makes the the peak torque of the from the factory. It just touches and drops off here, and you yeah. can see that it's already doing that by uh, 2,800 RPMs. It's it's making the same torque as the peak torque, which it made at 3,000 and then yeah. fell down uh, before. And then it never falls below that number, below the factory's peak torque, which is about 220. It, it never drops below that yeah. in, until Redline. <laughs> it's right holding, red line, yeah. Yeah, it's holding more torque than the peak yep. on, on stock the whole time. So, so, and, and as a, yeah. so for this test, this is just the off the shelf mapping with the flex fuel. Yeah, so yeah, this is all gonna, off the shelf. We talked about maybe one or two other things we're gonna do and then we'll come back and we'll actually you know, let you get into the ECM tune it. Yeah. But let's talk about crankcase pressure because some folks have act, asked about crankcase pressure with the FA24 and Carter, if you can see this. So this, this graph down here, that is actually crankcase pressure at, on all of these runs. And so Harvey, what do you, what do you see there? Oh, I see the usual. Uh, the, the crankcase, uh, I, people say pressure, but it's really a vacuum. vacuum. A correct PCV system is using the inlet, the turbo inlet hose to, to suck on the crankcase to, to grab all the blow by uh, that's coming around the rings during combustion and to dispose of it properly by combusting it and using it as part of the combustion process. In theory, I guess, you know, some of your oil is getting by and we're actually combusting oil uh, as part of the process. Very small amount. Very here. small amount, but yeah. my, my question is always like, is there energy in there? Is it, there's some energy being released that you're actually uh, picking up? Not, it wouldn't be horsepower necessarily, but when you're going down the road for a long time, it's using, it's combusting it, so maybe it gives you 0.005 better gas mileage. Anyway, this will probably be yeah. cut out, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's a cool idea to think about. But well, it's, because it's two psi at, at Redline, and mm -hmm. it's and it. What's interesting too is that the crankcase vacuum actually increased as we went to basically the stage one map and then the E85 map. Yeah, yeah, crankcase gets uh, pulled harder as we raise the boost. So their off the shelf map is r raising the boost, yep. and therefore uh, the suction is greater in the crankcase. So, so yeah, because on this car completely stock PCV and all these results the, the car is completely stock from from the airbox all the way to the tailpipe it's just the flash on the ECU and then the fuel in the tank that's the only difference yeah yeah it's pretty it is a very stock car and it's amazing that we can even install a flex fuel kit without doing injectors or a fuel pump or anything yeah and then uh, get it to make this kind of gain the other thing I was told uh, during the seminar was during testing that the emissions were actually cleaner even on 91 than the factory car. So oh, we've got sure, a yeah. custom tune that's running uh, more, uh, better, greener emissions, yeah. even when you're just starting it up in the morning um, on gasoline than, yeah. than a brand new car. Yeah. That's amazing. That's yeah. pretty cool. And it's, Good and work. Yeah, yeah, I cannot wait to drive this thing. So now we've got to get it off the dyno and get it home. Um, yeah, but we'll, we'll do like maybe one last thing of, of quick impressions. But Harvey, thanks for thanks for finding the time and putting it on the, on the dyno and, and getting us all the data. Yeah, yeah, I can't. I, I really want to tune it now, but I um soon soon. Yeah, soon. we need we want you need some more parts. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're on the way back from the dyno, getting the flex fuel tune. Very interesting stuff. Um, a lot of potential in this car, and yeah, running eighty five in the tank seems to really wake this wake the WRX up very cool I mean there's definitely a decent amount of beans now and you can feel the difference a lot more mid-range power it's good it was really really impressive looking at the dyno graph the torque the area under the curve the whole thing shifted so far yeah. forward way lower in the RPM range and especially in the lower gears you can feel that like second and third gear like in that two to three thousand rpm range it just it doesn't it, it's not flat you can feel things building there which is nice the the inlet temperatures i think that's the last piece of the puzzle here you know talking to harvey uh, with this time added intercooler it can heat soak and it can start to get fairly hot um just with this you know reflash on it um and so that's where like like man front mount front mount seems like it might be the last piece of the puzzle. So we, we installed all the parts without the reflash, no check engine lights, the stock ROM was running perfectly fine. Then we put the flex fuel on, it's running well on both pump gas and on E85, but E85 is definitely a whole other beast. Oh yeah. 
totally otherwise stock. Nothing 100 else. 100 stock car, other than the flash, the, the flex fuel bits, and then the, the fuel in the tank. That's it. Carter, what, what did it end up putting down? It was. It ended up making 264 horsepower and 298 torque, and that was yes. pretty. Pretty beefy in the amount of torque. Not as not as much of a jump in horsepower, but the torque. That's the that's the push. That's what you feel in the in the seat of your pants. The, yeah, it's got that. So with the front mount and keeping those inlet temperatures that much cooler, really excited to see what this car's like. But it's I mean it was fun before. It's just going to be even more fun now, and that's pretty awesome. Really digging this car. All right. Well, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for your support as always. And until next time, stay tuned to Flatiron's Tuning.